Well, she turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. Okay, okay, I'll try and keep my favorite quotes to a minimum or else we'll never get to the cast. But this Monty Python classic has more perfect moments than I can count. You could have 20 diehard fans in one room, all with a different favorite quote or scene. Tis but a scratch. So obviously in the comments, you gotta mention your absolute favorite line from this epic tale of the quest for the Holy Grail. As today, we toast a group of friends who got together to make a movie, conceived during the hiatus between the third and fourth series of Monty Python's Flying Circus. And this classic film nearly never happened due to financial limitations. But luckily, the comedians took advantage of England's very high taxes for the rich and targeted rock stars like Elton John, George Harrison, with critical contributions from the members of Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin, deciding to invest in the picture as a great tax write-off. And what turned out was a film some comedy fans hold dear in their top five of all time, including me and who am I exactly? Just nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember? So please grab your holy hand grenades, count to three, which is just before four and after two, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and chuck that holy hand grenade at that fierce beast. Now let's revisit some of the funniest fellas in Britain. Graham Chapman. I am Arthur, King of the Britons. King of the who? The Britons. Well, I didn't vote for you. Arthur, King of the Britons, was a legendary British king whom I did not vote for, as supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses, not from some farcical aquatic ceremony. But boy was Graham Chapman the man to lead the skip across England, as he co-wrote this masterpiece along with John Cleese, Eric Idle, Terry Gilliam, Terry Jones, and Michael Palin. You know, the A-Team. And you can't forget Graham as that middle head standing its post in argument. Chapman studied medicine and earned an MD, but only practiced medicine for a few years. That's because while at Cambridge, he took part in a series of comedy reviews, realizing what he really wanted to do with his life. His first credit was the precursor to Flying Circus, the surreal comedy of At Last, the 1948 show, which began in 67. You had Chapman, Cleese, and Igor himself, Marty Feldman. But it would be Flying Circus launched in 1969 that made them all house household favorites. Before the program aired on public television in the States, many people assumed that Americans would find Python too British and unfunny. But PBS never had a larger audience than when episodes began to air during the early 70s. And if the grail isn't your favorite Python flick, chances are it is 1979's Life of Brian, where the actors were in their prime, and Graham Chapman finally beat his dark passenger, an addiction to alcohol that unfortunately took a toll on his body. In 1988, the dentist found a small malignant tumor on his tonsils, and by the following year, the cancer spread to his spinal column. In just a year, the cancer was deemed inoperable. Chapman filmed scenes for the 20th anniversary of the first broadcast of Flying Circus, but that would be the gifted comedic actor's final time on TV. He died in October of 1989 at just 48. His eulogy wonderfully prepared by John Cleese. Watch it if you have a second. Well, I feel that I should say nonsense. Good riddance to him, the freeloading bastard I hope he's fine. <laughs> Graham was a trailblazer, being openly gay before it was socially acceptable, enjoying a public long-term relationship with writer David Sherlock, with whom he lived with for 24 years. They even adopted and raised a teenage runaway together. And although I did not vote for him, I am sure glad to have Graham Chapman as my king. John Cleese. Sir Lancelot the Brave is one of the greatest knights of the round table and is nigh afraid to slay a foe or a bride. Just look out for him in the distance. John Cleese began his career in 1966 as a scriptwriter and a performer on The Frost Report. And legendary interviewer David Frost and his production company were behind Cleese and Chapman's early vessel of the 1948 show. In the mid-70s, Cleese and his first wife, Connie Booth, co-wrote the sitcom Faulty Towers, which only completed a handful of episodes, but it's quite brilliant, and earned him the 1980 BAFTA for Best Entertainment Performance. And Cleese may have the best film career of the Pythons, highlighted by A Fish Called Wanda in 1988, co-starring with Kevin Klein. 
and Jamie Lee Curtis and Python colleague Michael Palin. Then a decade later in 97 was Fierce Creatures, both films for which he wrote. Certainly an absurdly talented entertainer. And we can't forget his nearly unforgettable ghost nearly headless Nick in the Harry Potter franchise. I promise you that is not me, he is way more nostalgic than I. In recent years he proved trustworthy as the narrator in the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh, as well as playing the role of Bridwell in 2021's Clifford the Big Red Dog. Today, Cleese is 82 years old, lives in Santa Barbara, and co-owns the Christine Shell Fine Objects Antique Shop. Check it out in Montecito, California. Terry Gilliam. Camelot. 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 It's only a model. Patsy is Arthur's servant and primarily uses two halves of a coconut to simulate the hoofbeats of Arthur's non-existent horse. A literal trotting gag that never gets old. But his actor Terry Gilliam proves much more critical to the film's success than a fake Mr. Ed, serving as co-director with Terry Jones. Although neither Terry had directed a film before, Gilliam provided all that trippy artwork for the iconic animations that served as buffers between scenes. Gilliam is also notable for being the only American Python, although he has denounced his American citizenship. He fled LA in the 60s for England, where he worked as an animator for the children's show Do Not Adjust Your Set. And it's here where he cultivated his unique style of animation using cutout pictures and photos. If the 1970s were experimental for the animator now turned director, the 1980s is where he thrived, directing films like 1981's Time Bandit starring Sean Connery, and then the bizarre Brazil in 1985 starring De Niro among many. And in 1991, a personal favorite of mine, The Fisher King starring Robin Williams and Jeff Bridges. Gilliam has notoriously hit some bad luck with his quests. In 99, he attempted to film The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. However, in the first week of shooting, the actor playing Don Quixote suffered a severely herniated disc. And then a flood damaged the set and changed landmarks that rendered previous footage useless. So the whole thing was called off, until he regrouped in 2018 for the now Adam Driver-led film. In 2008, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus got completely derailed when its lead actor, the gifted Joker himself, Heath Ledger, passed away during shooting. But creatively and ingeniously, Terry got some Hollywood powerhouses like Johnny Depp and Jude Law to step in, to play alternate versions of the main character, Tony. Today, Terry Gilliam is 81 years old and still at it. He's currently developing Time Bandits into a TV show, which will be his second film to transition onto TV, after 12 Monkeys did so in 2015. Eric Idle. Oh, brave Sir Robin. Or known as the not quite so brave as Sir Lancelot, with the greatest parade song ever. He was not in the least bit scared to be mashed into a pulp. Eric Idle is a titan of comedy, and along with acting, he's also a gifted singer, musician, and writer, contributing to not only Monty Python, but also the parody rock group The Ruttles. He's also notably hosted SNL and Impressive four times during its first five seasons. He kept telling Lorne Michaels he was going to bring the Beatles. Idle is widely known for his elaborate wordplay and musical numbers as he performed a number of Python songs. You can't forget Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, or what about Galaxy Song? He's written over 150 songwriting credits. Some of his non-Python films include 1992's Mom and Dad Saved the World, which required John Lovitz to quit SNL as Lauren said he couldn't miss one week. And another great role of his was a henchman of types in 1995's Family Friendly Casper. In 2004, Idol wrote the book and lyrics for the holy grail of musicals, Spam A Lot and won the Tony for Best Musical. It is a raucous good time, almost as good as the film. Today, Eric is in his late 70s, and in addition to all that, he's also written two novels, The Greedy Bastard Diary and Pass the Butler, a West End play. Terry Jones. Sir Bedivere the Wise is the helmeted knight who helps the mob decide if the girl with a carrot for a nose is indeed a witch. But his best character to me is the cowardly and hopefully romantic Prince Herbert, who enjoys both the curtains and busting out into song. I'd rather just sing. 
Stop that, stop that. Terry Jones began just like the rest at university, where he and his writing partner Michael Palin began writing and performing. He'd go on to create the animated comedy Blazing Dragons in the 90s, as well as writing and directing both the John Cleese-led comedy Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and the fantasy adventure flick Eric the Viking, both of which he acted in too. And Terry Jones is so pivotal to the Holy Grail, because as Gilliam was focused on technical aspects like animation, Jones was heavily focused on comedy, ensuring the moments landed properly. His final directorial effort was the 2015 comedy Absolutely Anything, for which of course he also wrote the screenplay. Sadly, health issues plagued his later life. In 2006, he was diagnosed with colon cancer, and after chemo, he became cancer-free. Then in 2015, he was diagnosed with a form of dementia that impairs the ability to communicate. And the strong Python guide passed away in January of 2020, just 11 days short of his 78th birthday. Michael Palin Sir Galahad the Pure is a knight who nearly got trapped spanking gorgeous ladies in a castle until his knight kinship came to rescue him, whew, thank god. Out of the pythons, he was notably the one who found it most difficult to keep a straight face. Palin was a flexible python. He and Terry Jones worked on ripping yarns, while he and Terry Gilliam completed Time Bandits and Brazil. But along with acting and writing, this Oxford graduate with a history degree enjoys traveling. He is a travel writer visiting amazing locations like both the North and South Poles, the Sahara Desert, Eastern Europe, and of course Brazil. He appeared as a presenter in a series of BBC travel programs, and has released seven audiobooks about his experiences. And many of these locations have experienced something called a Palin effect, where hordes of people followed Michael's lead to the spot. Today, the traveling actor is in his late 70s and still going strong. He's been married to Helen Gibbon since 1966, and their daughter Rachel is a producer for BBC's MasterChef adaptation. So there they are. I hope everyone is still with me. I'm not dead. What? Nothing. Here's your nine puts. Oh, good, 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 good. Monty Python is untouchable in Britain's comedic landscape. What is your personal favorite moment from the Holy Grail? Was it one I mentioned? Or was it the knights who say, knee? <laughs> <laughs> or is it the opening credits, where you learn all about the moose trainer and the creditor who gets sacked? Who out there ever saw Spamalot performed? We love hearing from you all, so get in the comments. And if you don't mind, smash that thumbs up icon, and subscribe to the channel so you never have to face Tim the Enchanter and his fireballs of skill. From all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching, and now the narrator has been sacked.